I don't want to Hi guys, and welcome to Modding Fallout 3 Part 1. Now the aim of this video series is to help you learn how to mod the Fallout 3 game. Um, I'm going to be starting with a completely unmodded game and taking you through the process of installing what I consider some of the essential mods. Um, and by the end of the series you will really have uh, very extensively modded your game. It is going to follow a very similar pattern to my modding Fallout New Vegas series um, in that it will be aimed at pretty much complete beginners to the modding scene. Uh, it will expect you to have a basic computer literacy ability um, and it will expect you to know certain things like where your game is installed, how to edit any files with the notepad etc. I will cover those but not in great detail. Now it may be a little different to the Fallout New Vegas series because Fallout 3 is a lot more mature than Fallout New Vegas was at the time of those videos and there are basically a large array of fairly well established must have mods for Fallout 3 um, and I'm going to try and get as many of those um, installed for you as possible. The series is probably going to be at least eight videos and it may be more. And if you are wondering why I'm releasing this video at this time when Fallout 3 is so mature, the simple answer is I am I have decided to do a new playthrough. So I need to install it again and I thought why not take you guys through the whole process so you can see me setting up my game for a modded playthrough. So let's start talking about the game and the mods. I am going to be using the Fallout Game of the Year edition or basically the Fallout 3 with all of the downloadable content. Um, I didn't actually get the Game of the Year edition, I got the, the game plus the downloadable content one at a time, so, but it's exactly the same as if you would bought the Game of the Year edition. But that is what I'm going to be working on. If you are missing some of the downloadable content, you are going to have to take that into account when installing mods. Now, the main tool you're going to use to install all of these mods is the Nexus Mod Manager for Fallout 3. Um, now, I have created a completely separate video that goes through the entire process of installing and using the Nexus Mod Manager. Um, and you can find it on the Fallout 3 Nexus page if you go along to the uh, Mod Manager tutorial video it will give you links or you can actually go straight to my YouTube channel and click on the link there. Uh, the video is about half an hour long and covers everything from installation to using it for simple mods, scripted mods etc. It should answer just about any question you have needed for this video series. Now one other thing you're going to need is the Fallout Script Extender. Now this is basically a little tool that allows other mods to do things that they otherwise would not be able to do. Um, it's pretty much essential for a lot of the mods I'm going to show you. It's fairly easy to install and I have done a complete video, a completely separate video just for the Fallout Script Extender. It will go into some details as to why you need it. It will show you how to install it and how to run your game um, with it enabled. So check that video out, make sure you've got it installed correctly before you continue any further in this video. So, what mods am I going to be installing in this video? Well, the main one I'm going to be installing is the Fallout 3 Wanderers Edition mod. And what this mod actually does is overhaul the game pretty much completely. It changes um, so many things, I probably am going to miss at least 90% of them. But to give you a... A vague, a vague idea of why we're going to be installing this, you can look on the page on the Nexus site and see um, the goals itself. They want richer character development, faster paced game, more unforgiving combat, 
greater improved survival aspect, new equipment, um, improvements to the diversity, character and behavior of many actors, factions and creatures, and an overall more ex immersive game experience. Um, they've also added an in-game control panel so you can completely customize these things to your needs. So for example, with the character, they've, they've made it a lot harder to do things like sneaking. They've improved the skill system, the special system. They make you level slower. And believe it or not, that is something you want. The default game, uh, the vanilla game, as I will now call it, vanilla game is just the default unmodded game. The vanilla game basically lets you level so fast that you will be at the level cap, the maximum level, with about 90% of the game still left to play. Um, and the game is very easy without this mod as well. So, this will slow down the leveling. You will still meet, reach the highest level. You will. It's just you will reach it um, a lot later in the game. So you've got a lot more reasons to continue playing. Um, you've still got a lot of development to do. Um, they have changed the combat system. Now, this is a massive change in the way the game feels. Uh, there is actually a video showcasing the type of combat you get. Um, it's what I consider one of the best videos for, for games in general, actually, but for Fallout 3, definitely. Um, I will leave a link for this video. You should come watch that now just to see the sort of things you're going to see. Um, you're going to see sprinting, bullet time, you're going to see grenade hotkeys, which is very useful in combat. Um, they've changed a lot of other things. For example, they've made bullets do a lot more damage. You're really going to have to avoid getting shot. They've increased the damage of explosives, which is great. I mean, it makes explosives and using things like mines a very viable way to play the game. But it's not just combat, um, it's everything. They've added loads of equipment. They've added um, what they call hardcore mode in New Vegas, uh, or primary needs. And basically that's hunger, thirst, um, and sleep. You need to do these things. If you don't eat and drink, you're going to die, or you're going to suffer consequences. Um, so that's been added to the game. Um, and this is one of those changes that actually ended up being in the Fallout New Vegas game. So it's, it's very immersive, it definitely helps you feel part of the world. Um, and a lot of other things. You can use explosives to open locks if your skill is high enough. You don't need lock picks, you can use explosives to break down doors. And the list just keeps on going. It's, it's an absolutely massive mod. It's definitely one you're going to want to install. Now, Fallout Wanderers Edition also requires that you have installed two other mods. One is called Craft, which is the community resource to allow fan-made tinkering. Uh, and the other one is the Community Ammunition Library, or Calibre. Uh, basically, these mods are there to allow a lot of other mods to share resources. Um, so for example, ammunition. So a lot of the weapons use the same ammunition. It makes them compatible across mods. Fallout Wanderers Edition comes with those two mods included in its download. So you don't need to actually install those mods. You don't need to install them, but you should be aware that when you install Fallout Wanderers Edition, both Craft and uh, caliber are installed for you. Now the second primary mod we're going to install uh, in this video is Mart's Mutant Mod. Now this is one of the greats. This is one of the absolute must-have mods and essentially it is a mod that overhauls the monsters, the NPCs. It does a massive number of things. It adds new creatures, it adds new variations to creatures, so there are more super mutants, subtle different types, same with ghouls, etc. It also varies the creatures you meet in size and strength. Um, in the vanilla game, all of the raiders are the same height, but with this mod, they vary. Some are taller than others, which makes it far more interesting to view and far more believable. It also increases the spawn rates. Now you can control that, but generally um, I like the game to have slightly more things to kill. Um, so I increase the spawn rates, not as much as um, the vanilla 
Mart's Mutant mod. It's not vanilla, but the default. Um, I, but I do have the spawns slightly higher than normal. And finally, I will be introducing you to the Fallout Interoperability Program, FOIP. And this is a basically a series of files and mini mods that help a lot of the large mods work together. So in this case, it has some files that we're going to need to get Fallout Wanderers Edition and Mart's Mutant mod working together nicely. This is a mod that we're going to come back to throughout the video series because as we install more mods we will need more compatibility patches to make them all work nicely together. But those mods alone, the Fallout Wanderers Edition and Mart's Mutant mod will change the vanilla game massively. I mean those two mods just by themselves will change the experience of playing this game so much you'll barely recognize it. It'll still feel like the Fallout 3 world, it doesn't change um, the lore, and it certainly doesn't make you feel like you're no longer in the, in the capital wasteland. But what it does do is it makes the game feel far more unforgiving, far more immersive, and actually a lot more fun. So, let's get started and get modding our game. So, we've got our game installed, we've got the Fallout Script Extender installed, and we know how to run the game using it, and we have the Nexus Mod Manager installed uh, with basically nothing but the game. No mods currently. So let's get started with the first of the mods, Fallout Wanderers Edition. If you go along to their page on Nexus and go to the file section, the files you are going to need, first of all, are the FWE Master Release 6.0 Part 1 and the Part 2. So download them both with the manager. Now when you click this button, it will automatically start downloading this file. So do the same with this one. Now I have two files. And you're also going to need the hotfix. This is a hotfix patch, it's required. Um, and we'll be installing this after these. You'll also notice there's an optional Darn UI support. Um, we will be coming back and installing this in a later video. I'm going to do an entire video on the user interface, so we will be coming back here for that. But for now, you can ignore this. Just basically these three files. And they are fairly large, so it will take some time for them all to download. Now, if you like, whilst those are downloading, you can also start downloading Mart's Mutant Mod files. So if you go to that page, which I will link below as well, and go to the file section, the main files, there's three of them. The one you actually need, the first one you need, is Mart's Mutant Mod RC61 Faux Mod Ready. And again, click the Download with Manager button and it should automatically be added to your list of downloads and begin downloading. You're also going to need the 6.2 update, so again, download with Manager. You don't need this first file because it's, it's basically you either have this one or the faux mod one. Faux mod basically is a Fallout Mod Manager ready um, installation. Fallout Mod Manager is the old mod manager that we used for Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas and in fact many people still use it and still prefer it and there are there are some reasons for it there are a few extra tools that currently um, Nexus mod manager does not have and the Fallout mod manager has but I'm gonna stick with Nexus mod manager for now if you do prefer the Fallout mod manager uh, my guess is you already know how to install at least you know you understand the differences between it installing and I'm gonna let you figure it out by yourself. And then finally for this video we are going to install the compatibility patches for the Fallout Wanderers Edition and Mars Mutant mod. So if we go along to the Fallout Interoperability program page and go to their files and you need to look down for the file that says Mart's uh, FOIP, Mart's Mutant Mod, and FWE. So download with Manager for that one. And it adds that to the list. 
Now, whilst those are downloading, let's talk about archive invalidation. Now, archive invalidation is a term you're going to hear fairly often uh, when modding, and I am going to cover it in another video in some detail, but for now, basically what you need to know is a lot of mods out there will not work unless you have archive invalidation. Uh, in fact, I would go so far as to say I can't think of any modded setup that does not require archive invalidation, um, so you are going to need it. Now, Nexus Mod Manager has a very nice little uh, option under the tools, archive invalidation, and you can apply the archive invalidation that way. However, this does not work for everyone, so there is an alternative way of doing this. So I'm going to remove it from Nexus Mod Manager. There is another way of doing it, and that is to go along to the Archive Invalidation Invalidated mod on the Fallout 3 Nexus. You download, what I would do is download the program version, not with the manager. This, these buttons should not be here. Um, it, I think this page has just not been updated since the new layout came out. So download manually on the program version. And once it has downloaded, you will have a zip file. You need this archive invalidation invalidated.exe file. Copy it. And then you're going to need to go along. Well, I place this in the data folder of my Fallout 3 game. I'm not 100% sure if it needs to be there, but it works there. Um, remember earlier we found your Fallout 3 folder? You're going to need to go back there and go inside data. This is a folder you're going to end up knowing very, very well because this is where about 99% of your mods will be found. And just paste this little executable into there. You can then double click on this exe, give it permission to run if it asks you, and then you'll get this tiny little program and you simply click the activate button. And you'll notice, I'll click OK, I'm going to exit. You never need to run this again. You never need to do this again. This is a one-time deal. You'll notice this BSA file. This means it's run correctly. It's also changed a few INI files. Um, and I think the reason that this works for some people when Nexus Mod Manager does not is it changes more INI files. It seems to change all of the INI files, uh, whereas Nexus Mod Manager only seems to change a few of them. So probably I would recommend doing it this way just to be absolutely sure. But once you've done it, you've now got archive invalidation. Now I'm going to leave the data folder open so we can actually see what happens to it as time goes on. And we're going to first of all install Fallout Wanderers Edition, Fallout 3 Wanderers Edition. Now this is a large mod. It will take some time to prepare and it will probably take some time to install. So be patient. Now, once it finishes preparing, you'll get this little setup wizard, which is very nice. And the core components you need, you need craft, you need caliber, you need the master and plugin. So leave all of those. The DLC compatibility patches, obviously, if you have all the DLC, leave them all selected. Um, basically, I think most people now have all the DLC, so you probably want it like this. However, if, for example, you don't have the pit, you don't need this selecting. It also has optional plugins for Followers Enhanced. Um, basically, unless you've got that mod installed, you ignore these. Now, for the optional plugins, uh, there's ones that restore the tracers because I believe the vanilla game has tracer bullets so you can see where your bullets are flying and Fallout Wanderers Edition, I think, removes them. So this allows you to put them back in or put them back in for automatic weapons only. It also allows you to change the, um, the time dilation on the VATs. Um, I'm going to leave those completely unchecked for now. If you want to experiment with those, you're more than welcome. I would read the details on it before you do. And then finally, the alternate travel. Now, this 
basically disables your normal fast travel. If you don't know what that is, you've not played the game, it's where you travel from one place to another and completely instantly from anywhere on the map. It's a little bit, um, a lot of people don't like it, so you can disable it with this. And what it actually does is it adds a motorcycle that will allow you to fast travel certain places. Um, and it also adds caravans to do the same thing. If you've ever played Morrowind, it's more like that. I've never tried it. I have never tried this, so I'm going to try it this time. So those are the options I've selected, basically just that one. I then hit the Install button. It now goes off and installs the files. You will notice over here some changes every now and again. Um, some new folders, new meshes, new textures, and Fallout Wanderers Edition files down here. Click OK. It's now installed part one. You still need part two, so activate that. Uh, now this is Nexus Mod Manager being a little confused. It thinks it's detected a newer version. Don't worry, you've downloaded the two files I told you to, so install the mod normally. You want to, selecting no will install the new mod normally, so click no. And once again, it will prepare the mod. Once it's finished preparing, you'll get this installation mod progress bar and no options this time. I think it's just adding a few more resources. And then finally, the hotfix. Activate the hotfix. Again, click no, let it do its thing. It'll be a lot faster this time. Now, what it's asking to do is overwrite files. In most cases, you're gonna click yes to all. And in this case, you're definitely going to click yes to all. It's replacing some, some files and it's replacing its own files, which is exactly what you would expect. And that's it. You now have Fallout Wanderers Edition, all the files activated and installed. Okay, so now I'm gonna just quickly check the plugins. And as you can see, you've got Craft, Caliber, and quite a few FO3 Wanderers Edition files. Um, I draw your attention to the bottom here. You'll notice it's actually installed the, res the Restore Traces, even though I selected not. Um, leave those files there. Leave those files there. I'm going to reorder them. Uh, but if you don't want them, deselect them. Now, I've changed my mind now. I want to actually have the traces for the automatic weapons, just the automatic weapons. So select that. You, you should only select one of these files, one or none. So this is okay. This is okay, this is okay, this is not. Um, it won't break anything, but basically this one will probably overwrite that, I think. I may even be wrong, it might just, ha this one might basically take precedence. So, that's how I'm going to set it up. Just be aware of that, it installs those files and selects them, even though you told it not to. So, now let's install Martigen's Mutant Mod. I will now call this MMM from now on, a little easier. Make sure it's MMM that you are activating, not the update. And once again, you will get this little progress bar. Now, once it finishes, it will bring up a menu that gives you basically two options. One is an in-game menu. That will be a menu you can open in-game and change all the MMM settings. Or it gives you an ESP configuration. Now, the ESP configuration is where you set the game up, not from inside game, but when you're doing the installation. It involves a lot of extra files, a bit more work, and is a little more complicated. I'm suggesting we go for the simpler option, which is the in-game menu. Here we go. In-game menu is automatically detected. Click Next. Now it detects all the DLC compatibility. You want those. Global options. Do not change them. Do not change them. There is no need to change them. Even if you want them, leave them alone. We're going to be installing a menu that actually does this for you in game and therefore you do not want these set. Click finish. Now it will ask to overwrite some files. Now what it's doing is it's applying a load of new animations to some of the creatures. Uh, you want to click yes to all. Basically MMM is your creature mod. Let it decide which animations they have. And it's finished. Quickly activate the update. And again, it will ask you to overwrite. Now this is overwriting its own file, so definitely click yes to all. And now it's activated. Now let's go and look at the plugins. 
Uh, as you can see, we've got quite a few files. There is the Mart Mutant Mod ESM is up here. That's because ESMs generally get placed above ESP files. In this case, it doesn't seem to have worked. Unless that one's flagged as a master, it's not detected it correctly. We'll talk about load order soon. Don't worry too much about it. For now, I'm going to reorder some of these so the DLC ones are all together. And the main one, Mart's Mutant Mod, I'm going to put just above those. You will also notice the Master Menu module, the Natural Selection, the Tougher Traders, and the Zones. Even though we didn't select them, it's added those files, but we've just not selected them. So leave those deselected. So now we have MMM installed as well as FWE. However, they do conflict in some manners and they should be made to work better together. So that's what we're going to do with Fallout Interoperability Program. And we just activate this. Now, this is a very small mod, installs that quick, and you'll see three files at the bottom. Uh, here's the thing. This one's for Mars Mutant Mod, FWE, and Project Beauty, which I am going to cover in another video because it's a great mod, but we don't have it. And if we left it here, it would crash our game when we started because it would be looking for the Project Beauty Master. So definitely deselect that. The thing is, is these files, basically, you only need one of them. This is the Master Re the FWE Master Release, and this is the one with DLCs. Now, I have the DLCs, so I only need that one. I don't need these. Now, there is one thing I need to mention here, and it's regarding the Master Menu module. Now, the Mart's Mutant mod comes with this Master Menu module, um, and basically the idea is this gives you a little item in-game that lets you summon up a menu that changes your settings. I will show you that. Um, and you don't need it in theory if you are using the um, the Fallout interoperability plugin um, that I've got selected here, or this one. In theory, um, the Mart's Mutant Mod settings should appear in the FWE menu settings. However, I found that they're not doing that for me. Now, they might do that for you, and if they do, then you don't need this file, and you can actually unselect it. But for me, at the moment, I'm not finding the um, FWE settings for MMM. So I'm going to leave this in so I do have that uh, menu as well. So I would recommend at the moment you leave it in. If you find you do have the MM set MMM settings under the FWE menu, you can always uninstall this at a later date. And that's it. You now have Fallout Wanderers Edition, uh, Mart's Mutant Mod, and the interoperability patches you require for those mods. So now let's talk about load order. Now load order is very important. I again, I'm going to cover this in more detail in one of my later videos. But essentially, these mods are going to get loaded into game in this order. The game will automatically load masters first before ESPs, no matter what order you put them in. So if you take this ESM and stick it at the bottom, it will not. Oh, it won't. Now, this is nice. Nexus Mod Manager is not even allowing me to do it. It's not allowing me to put it here. However, it, it did allow me to put it after alternate travel. What this tells me is, even though this is an ESP, ah, uh, there we go. The plugin has the file extension ESP, but its file header marks it as an ESM. Nexus Mod Manager has detected it's an ESM. Uh, I am going to put this ESM above the ESP. Ordinarily, ESP files are not flagged as masters. This one is. Uh, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. However, again, generally a good idea to have masters above ESPs. Anything below here will have a list of masters. Say this one here has got Fallout 3, the pit, and the main file ESM for Fallout Wanderers Edition. All of these files must come above it. Must come above it. So that's the first thing you should know about load order. The next thing is that load order decides a lot of things and it decides which mods win if they change the same thing. So it's very important 
as to you know your load order is it's critically important so let's check the fallout interoperability page and see what it says about load order here we go craft and caliber at the top below obviously these are the these are the six main files there at the top underneath them are craft and caliber see so I've got those in the correct place project beauty I don't have installed it then has the fallout wanderers edition main file followed by Mart's mutant mod check we're doing the same thing we then have the fallout well there's the Darnified UI which we don't have and project beauty so we'll ignore those it then has the Fallout Wanderers Edition main file ESP. Let's find that. Let's put that there below. Ah, we need to put it above, uh, below alternate travel. Again, alternate travel has been flagged as a master file. No idea why it's called an ESP file, actually. Underneath this, there is the DLC. Now, they've got it as Anchorage, Pit, Broken Steel, Point Lookout, and Mothership. It's probably worth... I, I actually don't think it makes much difference which order the DLC ones are in. I may be wrong. But let's put them in that or load order anyway. And then other optional FWE modules. Uh, oh, the follower enhanced we're not using. So I'm going to move that to there. This one's not selected. Then there are some other files that we are not... We don't have installed yet. We're probably going to have all of these by the end of these videos. And then we have Mart Mutant Mod. Mart Mutant Mod ESP. Followed by Anchorage Pit Broken Steel. Anchorage Pit Broken Steel. Point Lookout and Zeta. We then have the Project Beauty we don't have. But we do have the Master Release. Mart Mutant Mod Master Release. Which is to be loaded after the DLCs and as you can see it is these optional extras here because they're not selected it doesn't matter where you place them but I'm gonna leave them exactly like this and that's it I now have my load order correct for those mods now if you are the sort of person who likes to clean up uh, files that you don't need then you could select the natural selection tougher traders and zones respawn that you're never going to need you are not going to need these because you are really always going to use the master menu module um, it, you just honestly it's the best way to do it so you can delete those files you're not going to need them I I'm also going to really um, delete the Fallout Wanderers edition master release dot ESP um, and the reason I'm going to do that is I will never play this without the DLC so I will always use this one I'm not going to delete this because I am almost certainly going to install Project Beauty. I am almost certainly. It's actually called uh, Fallout Redesigned uh, now, but same, basically same mod. I am going to install that, so I'm going to leave it. I'm also going to leave the optional restore tracers just in case I change my mind on which of these I want. But that clears up my load on. And then now, even though I've deleted them, you don't see any change until you close down Nexus Mod Manager and start it again. And once you do, those files will be gone. And it's just, it looks a little neater. It's really completely up to you how you want to do it. But as you can see, little shorter list, little neater. Okay, so essentially we're done. Uh, we've now got FWE and MMM installed and hopefully working. So you can start up your game. Remember to start it up with um, the Fallout Script Extender running. Um, and try it out. Now, if you start a new game with Fallout Wondrous Edition installed, um, you can actually skip the beginning tutorial, and in fact, you get alternative starts. Um, so you can start as a regulator, a cyborg. And there's a whole there's a whole uh, list of alternative starts you can pick. And what will happen is during the start scene you'll get a little message popping up that will, here you go, you can continue to dream, which is the Vault 101 start, and the alternative start. Now, if you've never played the game before, I do recommend you do the Vault 101 start. The game is a lot more um, 
uh, it fits the story a lot better. Um, and they will keep talking about you as if you are from Vault 101. But if you want an alternative start and you can ignore the the messages, the, so the radio talking about you as the kid from Vault 101, click the alternative start and you will appear in a little hut. Um, and you get the bobblehead, which you can take, and then a terminal which basically lets you pick your race, disposition, ex all the things you should have done, um, but it also lets you pick a history. You can be an escaped slave, outcast, there are so many things, there are quite a lot of them actually, and you get to pick them. And depending on what you pick, depends on what gear you start with and where you start. So that's pretty cool. And once you finish picking all those things, you sleep in this mattress and the game starts properly. Now, if you load up an existing game with Fallout Wanderers Edition installed, a number of things are going to happen. First of all, if you open up your Pip-Boy, you're going to get some items. The Fallout Wanderers Edition control panel, the triage, and also the MMM control panel. Um, I'll show you the MMM control panel first, very briefly. This basically allows you to, say, change the increased spawns, um, current minimum one extra spawn, current maximum three extra spawns. Um, and as you can see, there's if you pick slightly increased, you get between one to two. So it's it's a lot more than the normal game, but it's not quite as as much. Um, if you you can change the ghoul options and so on. There are also a whole load of uh, monsters. So for example, floaters. Um, Wanamingos and Geckos and Iguanas, I believe we're all in the first two games, but it, for example, I'm not that keen on the Floaters or the Wanamingos, so actually I'm going to leave them off, uh, but I quite like the Geckos, um, so I'm going to turn those on, oh. um, and there's a few other options here, if you want to read up about these options, go to the website the website for MMM and read about them. You can figure this out. There's nothing really difficult about it. Um, the Fallout Wanderers Edition control panel is massive. It allows you to change everything from the character settings, how fast you level, how much damage things do, the loot settings, whether ammunition um, weighs anything, because in the default game, ammunition is weightless, but with Fallout Wanderers Edition, it actually weighs something, so you can't take five million bullets and 3,000 rockets. <laughs> which is, um, you know, a bit more realistic. Primary needs, that's your hunger, thirst, etc. And also set the hotkeys for things like bullet time, um, sprinting, etc. All of these things can be controlled from this menu. Um, and there is a supported mod configs, and the idea was MMM was supposed to appear here, but it doesn't, as you can see, for me. Maybe you get it working. If so, send me a message and tell me how you did it, because <laughs> I am very interested. Um, and exit. And then there's the triage. Now triaging is uh, basically how you heal after you break limbs, after you cripple limbs. Um, again, you can read up all about that on the FWE site. But if you've got these, basically you've installed all the mods correctly. A few other things are going to happen. Um, you're going to get a pop-up uh, menu option basically asking you whether you want to use the motorcycle fast travel replacer or the normal games and that is completely up to you so there you go wasteland explorer startup now i'm going to enable it because i want to try out the um motorcycle so pretty cool but that's completely up to you and there it is fallout wanderers edition is now installed along with mart's mutant mod and that's it for this video. Um, I realise it was a long video, uh, but we've covered quite a lot of very important stuff, and we now have a very solid base on which to build our modded game. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it was useful. Um, if it was, please click the like button down below. I always appreciate that. Uh, the next videos are all going to be a lot shorter and a lot more focused on specific areas to mod, um, and you are more than welcome to join me for those. Anyway, until next time, have fun.